In this video, we kick off a Space Marine centric series. Stay tuned. What up, mini family? Welcome to a new series that I'm dubbing, or S dubbing, <laughs> Heavy Metal Marines, wherein I attempt to paint one tactical marine from 10 of the major chapters. What is heavy metal, you ask? Well, first of all, the missing H is intentional, but it's Games Workshop Studio Painters, and needless to say, they are all fantastic painters. They're the ones responsible for painting all the pretty miniatures you see online on Games Workshop's web store. They don't, however, paint all miniatures equal. If you look at some of the HQ choices or the Lords and Heroes, you'll see that they're painted much better than the standard rank and file troops, making this task much easier. I mentioned a moment ago heavy metal style. There are a few characteristics we should talk about before moving forward. Number one, heavy metal is all about edge highlighting. If it's got any kind of raised detail at all, it needs an edge highlight, and maybe even multiple edge highlights, getting brighter and brighter and the lines getting thinner and thinner. Number two, there isn't a whole lot of blending going on, just lots of layering going on. And number three, everything is super clean and straight and neat. Nothing is out of order. Finally, with those two things out of the way, let's paint the poster boys of poster boys, the Ultramarines. The first step is assembly. I kept the bolter and head separate because the bolter blocks a lot of the chest detail and the head is easier to paint when the armor isn't blocking the lower part of the face. I attached each piece to a handle to avoid touching it with my fingers and smearing my oils all over it during paint up. Next step is undercoating. I picked Tami as gray primer because gray doesn't really impact the base coat as intensely as black or white, making it easier to apply the first layer of paint. After undercoating, we moved on to the first base coat, which I apply with an airbrush. This allows my base coat, which is the first layer that shows through the most, to be incredibly smooth and even, like most of Evy Metal's paint jobs. The color I chose for this step was Games Workshop's old foundation paint, Mordian Blue. After this, it's on to black lining. For this task, I chose Games Workshop's shade, Azerman Blue. I made sure to pull a dark, thin line in all the deepest parts of the details. Sometimes I needed to mix up a little bit of black with my base coat and paint the shade in instead of using the shade if I couldn't get it to cooperate. I then went back in with my base coat and cleaned up the shade that was out of place and ensured all the lines followed the details perfectly. After the cleanup, it's straight on edge highlighting. I used Games Workshop's Ultramarine Blue for the first layer. After this edge highlight, I did an even thinner highlight of 50-50 Ultramarine Blue and Skull White. As the edge highlights get thinner and thinner, I add more and more water to them. This helps the paint flow off the brush more, allowing me to really take advantage of the sharp tip of my brush. In this video, I'm using a Sharf Size 2-0 for the majority of the model. After this, we did the final edge highlight, which is a 75-25 mix of Skull White and Ultramarine Blue. As the highlights get brighter and brighter, focus more so on the corners where the edges meet and less so on the long straight lines in between. After this step, the armor is done. To get super clean results like this, it's really just a back and forth procedure. You're not going to get razor sharp lines with the first brush stroke. Lay down an edge highlight and then refine it with the last layer until it's the thickness you like. The next step is to black out all the armor and black bits, like the joints and the knees and elbows, the tubing and the majority of the gun, etc. After that, I painted all the metallic parts with Iron Breaker Silver and gave them all a heavy wash of Bad-Eye Black, making sure to have all the black lines accentuating the details. Then we went on to refine all the silver parts with Runefang Steel. I also painted all the rivets with Runefang Steel at this point as well. I then moved on to the gold parts, like the crests on the chest, the trim on the shoulder pads, and the little filigree. 
I started with a base coat of Retributor Gold and washed in Seraphim Sepia. I made sure to target the corners of the shoulder pads. As you can see in Games Workshop's model, the corners are where it is very red gold. After the wash, I edge highlighted with Retributor Gold. After that, I edge highlighted with 5050 Runefang Steel and Retributor Gold. Finally, I used pure Runefang Steel to edge highlight. Again, if your edge highlights aren't perfect, that's totally fine. Just re-establish them with the previous layer. It really is a back and forth operation. After this, I moved on to the black portion of the bolter and the mohawk. I base coated them with Abaddon black and I tied them with Ashen gray and then Ashen gray with a little skull white mixed into it. Finally, it was time to move on to the precious head. I base coated the head with Talarin Flesh, and then washed it with Ogren Flesh. I then layered on Talarin Flesh, making sure to keep the deepest recesses untouched. I followed this up with a layer of 50-50 Talarin Flesh and Kislev Flesh, followed by an edge highlight of just pure Kislev Flesh, followed by a final edge highlight of 50-50 Skull White and Kislev Flesh. After this, I painted the eyes and the teeth, and then I pinned the miniature to a already completed base, and I was done. The model looks pretty good. What surprised me is that as soon as I attached the bolter, the overall edge highlight of the power armor toned down a lot. This is because the bolter blocks a lot of the central detail that I highlighted. My metallics also aren't as contrasted as GW's. However, it was a good fun exercise, and I will take these lessons that I learned into the next video that I do about Space Marines. Speaking of, which chapter do you guys want to see next? Comment below. If you guys know a mini man or woman who is painting up an ultramarine army and wants their scheme to look very similar to Games Workshop Studio armies, consider sharing this video with him or her. Speaking of you guys, let's look at the community highlight for this week. This week we have Space Hulk Terminators from Scott. You'll notice something strange about these Space Hulk models though. For one, they're converted, and for two, they're not Blood Angels. Scott and his friend have been mixing it up with different chapters in Space Hulk, the board game, and I love it. Thanks for the submission, Scott. If you want to see your miniatures at the end of one of my videos, check out the description to this video. Thank you for commenting, sharing, and subscribing. But more importantly, go paint some minis. There are tons of specific classes you can take, like how to paint faces or how to paint wood. There are individual tournaments for a variety. The body of the table is made out of cotton, and I'm not quite sure what the legs are made out of. The main tools we used to create this table were a miter saw, a jigsaw, 